Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. We are here, we are in October. This is my favorite time of year. Halloween is my favorite holiday. I've been talking about the kinds of books that I wanna to talk to you guys about all through the month of October. And today we are officially beginning. And we are beginning with a bang. I mean, we're starting out pulling no punches. Here we go. The book that I want to talk to you about today is called Brother, and this is by Anya Alborn. I purchased this book from Amazon in August, and it was part of that month's haul. And if you watched that video, then you heard me like freaking out over which book I wanted to read. I wanted to read them all. And Brother was the winner. I read this one immediately after doing that haul for you guys. And oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I'm embarrassed to admit that I have over time purchased more and other Anya Alborn books, but this is the first one that I ever picked up to read. And now I hate to break it to Anya Alborn, but she has a fan. So Brother is the story of the Morrow family and they live in rural West Virginia. And I know you're saying, isn't all of West Virginia rural? Well, it's close, but not all of it. They do have Charleston and Princeton and Beckley and that other place. But anyways, the Marls live in rural West Virginia and it is a mother and father, two sons and a daughter. Now I'm gonna be walking a very fine line in this video today between telling you the story and spoiling the story because this book reveals shocking information gradually over time as you progress through the novel. So there are things that I don't wanna tell you about that happen very early in this book, but I want you to read them. I want you to experience them because that's, that's how they're gonna be the most effective and the most affecting. So <clears throat> the 19 year old boy in the Morrow family is named Michael and he's not related to them by blood. He was actually adopted. I say adopted in that way because the Morrows abducted him from his front yard when he was a very, very small boy. They've changed his name and they've, they've raised him as their own this whole time. They've made him a part of the family by telling him that his previous family didn't want him, that they had put him out on the side of the road like garbage and that he's lucky that the Morrows came along to rescue him, that they saw something in him that they wanted for their own family. And they're the rescuers, they're the heroes. And that's what Michael has been told since three or four years old. So that's ingrained in his mind. Unfortunately, what the Morrows are involved in and what the Morrows want from Michael doesn't really sit well with him. He knows what they're doing is not right, but he still does it out of this sense of loyalty, out of this sense of duty and debt that he needs to pay to these awful people. It's up to Michael and Rebel, his brother, to abduct women of a certain age, of a certain appearance, that they bring home to their family so that their mother can kill these women. There's, I mean, that's what you're, that's what you're faced with at the very beginning of this book. You're reading about a family who kills young women and teenage boys are abducting them. And then they're watching their mother violently murder them. I devour these kinds of stories in horror. And I talked a little bit about it in my Happy Holler Read video about why I read horror. And when I talk about morality and the grayness that surrounds it, I'm talking about characters that appear in Brother. There are, there are characters in here that are completely reprehensible. There is, there is nothing that could deliver salvation unto any, uh, unto some of these characters. But then you have characters like Michael <clears throat> who have found themselves in a situation and they do horrible things and they're responsible for horrible things. But believe me, you will feel so sorry for Michael. You 
will be on Michael's side. You won't want Michael to get away from the Maros. You will want him to live an amazing life and you will want him to, you know, rain justice down upon this family. Even though he is as physically guilty as they are. <clears throat> You know the reasons that he's doing this. You excuse his behavior. You justify his behavior. And that's what I love about these kinds of books, about these kinds of horror novels. Now we have to talk about Rebel. <laughs> he is the other key character of this book. He is Michael's brother. Michael's presence in this family all goes back to Rebel. He is responsible for bringing Michael, introducing Michael to this family. And he was also the one planting these horrible ideas in Michael's head about his previous family and how grateful he should be to the Morrows. He's pulling Michael into the fold. He is bringing Michael in and burying him deep in this family. But at the same time, Rebel has an intense hatred for Michael. As you read the book, you'll be reading about Rebel's growing hatred of Michael, all while exerting a dominance over him that keeps him there, that keeps him in the family. And it seems very, very strange until you start to learn how truly evil Rebel really is. This is exactly the kind of horror novel that I want to read. Exactly. You're going to find out how much you hope for goodness, how, how much you're going to root for goodness. You can't help but confront like how much you want good for these characters, how much you want, at least Michael. And I think it's just, we're conditioned, right? We're, we're conditioned or we're used to reading a certain kind of book and, and things resolving themselves for characters and, and goodness winning in the end in most cases. <clears throat> and this book is going to take you on a ride that one minute you just know that good things are going to happen. And then the next minute you know that there is no chance in hell that this is working out for anybody. And then something else happens and you're back to being hopeful. It is a roller coaster that makes the reader desperate. It, it breeds a desperation in the reader. And I love it. I loved every twisted, like, manipulative second. Now, I knew what was going to happen, but I mean, I was sitting around like, what is the most twisted thing that I can think of? And it turns out like the most twisted thing that I can think of is what happens. I didn't figure out what was going to happen based on specific clues. I just, once I started encountering more and more evil from Rebel, I just started thinking about what could be the worst, most horrific, awful thing that this book could be building up to. And pretty much my imagination, the most horrific, awful thing that the book could be leading up to is what it was leading up to, unfortunately. The year is never explicitly mentioned in the book. and. It probably shouldn't be because the Morrows are living separate from any space or time. The sister that lives in the house, in the farmhouse, never leaves. I don't think the mother ever, ever leaves. The only ones that leave the farmhouse are the boys. It's really hard to tell you for sure when this book is taking place. There's a lot of mention of tab being the drink of choice. They are talking about an Oldsmobile Delta is their car. There's, there's sixties posters. There's a record that the girl gives Michael, uh, by the cure. So I feel like seventies, eighties is our time. 
but again, I don't feel like time is anything that the characters would ever consider. I don't know that the characters even know what year it is. I mean, time is just not a unit of measurement for the Morrows. So the setting is very timeless as well. The days, it's summer, the days are very hot and hazy. And West Virginia is very humid because all of those mountains are covered in trees. And so the humidity like sticks in West Virginia. It's an uncomfortable book all the way around from, from its content to not knowing exactly what time frame to place this stuff in and also like physical discomfort with the setting, the heat and the, and the, and the humidity and the farmhouse being so hot and there not being even a lot of windows and you just feel stifled. Everything just, it's beautiful in context, you know, it's, it's beautiful the way that the whole novel is framed for us with this unifying discomfort, but it's, it's an experience to read for sure. Now, I have to say, if I hadn't made it sound this way yet, I'm going to say it very bluntly. Do not read this book if you are sensitive to any number of things. <laughs> or if just reading about certain things upsets you, do not read this book. Just to lay it out there, it's not going to be a book for everyone. This is my kind of horror novel because it makes me question things that are right and wrong and you know, it's thought provoking. There's way more to the story than I've talked about and I don't want to talk about it because this book needs to be experienced from the first page to the last page. My blog where I do write about all of the books that I make videos about will have more information than this video does. I wish the rest of the month was going to be about books this good. I can't say that that's going to happen because I haven't read a lot of books this good, especially horror books this good. So basically that's all that I have for Brother, the first book that I'm bringing you in October. It's so good and it's a five star for me. So let me know if you have read Brother or if you have any other Anya Alborn experience. I am dying to know what everybody thinks. That's all that I have. I will see you guys in... So I will see you guys so much this month. You guys are going to be so sick of my face, but it's like a couple days at the most maybe. So stay tuned for all of the videos for Happy Halloween. I will see you all very soon.